Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Okay. Just uh, funny how these little uh, trying to run two cameras at once yeah. as it's as it's challenges. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, I guess the recording will have a little uh, nonsense there at the beginning, but we'll go forward now. Okay, so Nadi showed in the pranayama, a little uh, alternate nostril breathing. Uh, <clears throat> you all know this pretty well, so we'll just dive right into it. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk it through the first couple of cycles, but feel free to just ignore me and just do it at your own pace. because you all have done this, you know what feels right to you in terms of the duration of the inhales and exhales. So what I'm inducing you to do isn't necessarily what you really want to do. So do, do the pacing that you want, but I will nonetheless give the cues, if you know what I'm saying. So feel free to ignore my cues. All right. <clears throat> so in any case, because some people may watch this video uh, subsequent afterwards, we're gonna take the middle finger and the pointer finger and it'll either be on the third eye space or on the bridge of the nose. Mr. Eingar teaches it on the bridge of the nose. And then the thumb touches the right side of the nose and the pinky and ring finger touch the left side. So those, those are up at the cartilage parts of the nose. And you wanna use just the minimal effort in closing. So with practice, you end up not even really needing your fingers at all, but you know, I still do, and, and it, it's helpful, especially if you're a little congested one way or another, to uh, use the finger positions. So <clears throat> we'll have the eyes closed, and you can either have your chin up, or you can have Jalandhara Banda with your chin down, like so. But if you bring your chin down, don't round your back down. So we want to, it's, it's critical in the pranayama to keep the torso lifted, the spine erect, and the chest open. And there's a tendency, when you bring your chin down, there's a little tendency to kind of round the shoulders with the back. So avoid that. Okay, either with or without Jalandhara Bandha. And of course, your other hand can either be resting in your lap or in Jnana Mudra with the index finger and thumb tips touching and the other fingers extended out, palms up with the back of your hand resting on your knee or thigh. Okay, so breathe uh, a few times in and out both nostrils, just kind of getting relaxed and at ease uh, in preparation for the uh, Nadi Shodhana Pranayama. All right, so we'll start by taking an inhale through both nostrils. And then exhale through both nostrils. And then close right, inhale left. Close and hold. Open right, exhale right. Close and hold. Open right, inhale. Close and hold. Open left, exhale. Close and hold. Open left, inhale. Close and hold. Open right, exhale. Close and hold. Open right, inhale. Close and hold. Open left, exhale. Close and hold. 
Open left, inhale, continue on your own for a few more seconds. Now, after your next hold, after exhale on the left side, return to normal breathing. And then keeping your eyes closed with an inhale, you can lift your chin. <clears throat> and with an exhale, you can open your eyes. And then we'll take uh, Supine bound angle pose. So uh, if you have a bolster, you know, uh, use it as in this little setup here. Or you can do it flat on the floor if you don't have a bolster. Uh, but make yourself comfortable. The idea here is to find a nice, comfortable uh, place to just release into. As I uh, suggested in a little promo for the class, going to be mostly a restorative class. Uh, you know, th there will be some effort in, in, in some of the poses, but for the most part, we're going to be laying about and just taking it easy with ourselves today. So, we're close to the wall. So find a nice spot and lie back and just let go. So of course, um, as I get here, I realize yeah, yeah, a little, little height under the thighs. Just to make this a little less intense for the beginning of the class. Uh, so you're not in your full maximum position. So this is the idea.
And we're going to stay lying down. I'm going to come up. And if you have the belt on your feet around your waist, you can take that off. And we'll move into uh, Sukta Paramustasana. So, as I said, we're going to stay lying down. I'm going to make some little adjustments to my mat position and such. And let's see if I can change this camera position as well. <clears throat> So I have a little bit of room to bring the legs back and forth. All right. So that's my setup, just like so. And as I said, if you have and wish to use a belt for uh, for the Sutta uh, Karangustasan, feel free to, to grab that stuff. And then stretch out on your back in Sukta Tadasana. And then we'll go ahead and just hug that right knee into the chest. Just get started the same way we typically do. Um, just to really ease out any little stresses that we're holding in our low backs. Abdomen groin. You know, this allows some real softness in the abdomen. And of course, there's a lot of gripping and tension that we hold in the abdomen in the area of the solar plexus, the navel. Then move through Supta Tadasan and bring the left knee up into the chest, then the right heel away. Keeping the sacrum left and right sides evenly on the floor, shoulder blades left and right sides evenly on the floor, and the back of the head balanced and centered evenly on the floor. And then Back to the first side. Bring the right knee up into the chest, hug that knee into the chest, extend the left heel away. And then again, the second side, bring that left knee up, changing the interlace of the fingers, draw the left knee up into the chest, extend the right heel. And then return to Sukta Tadasana. So now, if you have a bolster or any other kind of height, uh, you could use an ottoman, a couch, pillow, anything. Uh, you may wish to use so this will, when you're doing the Sukta Parangustasana, you don't go into the most extreme position, but you're in a supported position. So I'm going to use bolsters on either side. And then again, we're going to hug the right knee into the chest. Take your belt around the ball of the foot if you have a belt. If you don't, you just hold on to your leg. And then extend that right heel up. Extend the left leg out onto the floor. Both kneecaps firm into the thighs. And as usual, when we do this, we draw the right foot toward your head, just to the point where you feel that resistance in the right thigh, the back of the right thigh, the hamstring. We're just going to hold here 
just in that point uh, where the resist resistance begins. And then we'll reach up the strap, holding both straps with your right hand, left hand over to the left side, keeping the left side of the sacrum on the floor. We're going to bring that right leg and foot over to the right side. Again, if you have something to rest it down onto, uh, that'll allow you to really be at ease in this mod mod modest uh, modified pose. Because it's all those things. Modified, moderate, and whatever that other M1 M we take in front of you as well. Modest. Modest, moderated, modified pose. I'm just going to reside here, breathe quietly and evenly, allowing yourself to be in a not too stressful pose for a period of time. All right, back up the center. Put your hands on the strap, holding with your left hand, right hand off to the right side. We're going to go all the way over into the revolved pose. We're not going to do the Pergang Gustasan three, just all the way over into the Paribrita revolved version. So for this, we're going to bring the right foot and leg over to the left side. We're going to let the right side of the sacrum roll with, and we're going to allow the left leg and foot to roll over toward the left as well. And then again, if you can, you want to rest down onto something so that you can be in this pose for a little longer than you might otherwise tolerate. I happen to have the advantage of a wall that I'm able to press my foot into as well. So that's kind of nice to take advantage of if you have. You know, maybe a, a coffee table or a couch or a wall where you can uh, press your foot into, and that allows you to keep the right leg straight without putting too much effort into it. And 
this one is a little intense for me or for others who have tight piriformis muscles. So you may not be able to stay in it too long. If it starts to be bothersome, just bend that right knee a little bit. Take a little of the pressure off. And then come back up to center. And return that foot to the floor. Switch the belt to the left foot. And bring that left leg up. And we're extending the left heel toward the ceiling, left sit bone into the floor. Drawing that foot toward the head, so you feel that resistance in the back of the left thigh. Meanwhile, we extend the right heel out onto the floor, keeping both kneecaps drawn at the end of the thighs. Stay with this, flip the foot on the stuff in one. All right, then reach up that strap as your left hand, right hand down to the right side. And then we're gonna bring that left foot and leg over to the left side while keeping both sides of the sacrum and both shoulder blades on the floor. Again, we wanna find a spot with enough support so that you don't feel stressed here. You know, maybe a tiny bit of stress, but the idea is no, not so much stress that you can't just kind of let go into the pose. So for me, I'm just making little adjustments to the exact position of my bolster so that I can get to just that point where I'm right at the edge of discomfort, where it's just before I'm feeling uncomfortable.
right, and then back up to center. Switch hands on the strap. And then we're going to go into the revolved version, Paribrita. Hasta para Hasta para We're going to let the left hip and sacrum follow us over to the right. And we're going to let the right leg and foot turn and roll over to the right as well. Again, we want to find a supported, reasonably comfortable version of this pose. So that you can kind of be here for a bit. So and then back up the center. And release the leg down, put the belt off to the side. Extend both legs. And again, in Supta Tadasana. And once again, bend the right knee up into the chest. Bend the left leg straight, extending that left heel. Take them shoulder blades, back of the head evenly on the floor. And then move through Supta Tadasan to the second side, hugging the left knee into the chest, changing the interlace of the fingers, extending the right heel. Take from shoulder blades, back of the head, even on the floor. and then extend that leg on the floor. Now, if you have only one bolster or one support, put it over on the right side. And we're gonna bring the knees and feet over to that side. So then bend both knees up into the chest, hug your knees into the chest, pinning the knees and the feet together. Right hand goes on the outside of the left knee, the left hand goes out to the left side, and then bring the knees and feet over onto your prop whatever that prop might be, or all the way to the floor, if, uh, if that's what feels better to you, or if you have no props. And then we just reside here in this supported twist. Breathe quietly, evenly, letting the abdomen move from right to left, kind of in the opposite direction of the movement of your knees and feet.
and then back to center. Again, hug the knees into the chest and then switch. Left hand on outside of right knee, right hand goes off the side, keeping both shoulder blades on the floor. Bring your knees and feet pinned together over to the left side onto whatever prop you may have. And then back at the center. Again, hug your knees into the chest for a moment. Feeling the comfort that brings in your low back. And rest your feet on the floor. And then extend your legs out onto the floor. And allow the legs and feet to just fall out away from each other. And just enjoy this little release, this Shavasana-like release for a few, for several breaths. And then bend your knees, feet on the floor, roll to your side, and come to a seated posture. <clears throat> so now we'll do a couple of things where it'll be very helpful to have a height uh, that you can lean forward onto. Um, a bolster is fine, but with uh, my you know, tight legs, I'm going to use. <clears throat> and I'm going to put a blanket on top of it. And <clears throat> we'll do wide angle pose, Upa Vishta Konasana. So I'm going to separate my feet widely, like so. Keep the kneecaps firm into the thighs, facing the chair. Bring my arms up with an inhale, and then with the exhale, I take my forehead down onto the chair. So as we're here, then nicely supported, you can use whatever height you need. Maybe you need a bolster on top of the chair as well. It doesn't matter what height you need. Just use what height that you need, and that allows you to just release into the pose. Meanwhile, we're keeping the kneecaps firm into the thighs and we're keeping the heels extended, keeping the back of the knees, back of the thighs, pressing into the floor. So we're not giving up the structural integrity, so to speak, but we're not uh, trying to uh, find our maximum extension. A comfortable but full 
extension. And then we allow the forehead to rest down on the prop. And just be at ease here. Wide angle pose. And then we'll inhale and ease up from there. <clears throat> and now we'll take bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together. Knees extended out. And then we're going to again do the forward bend using a support. So inhale, lift, exhale, forward bend. It's a tough one for me. I won't be, I won't be staying here too long. It's nice to be able to take a pose like this and stay for a bit with support. Okay, we'll ease up from there. So I want to keep this chair structure if you have it. However, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have a wall for this next thing. And I'm going to turn my chair over this way. I'm going to do this with my legs straight. So you can, we're going to do um, a twist over onto the chair. So you can do this with your legs straight like I have in Dandasana staff pose. Uh, you can see it better on that side view from me. Uh, or you can do it in any seated posture that you like. Uh, Bhattapanasana, uh, simple cross-legged posture, Sukhasana. Uh, you can uh, do it uh, uh, with your legs wide apart in Upavishapanasana if that's what um, finds uh, a good pose for you. I'm going to, then you have a chair or a prop of some sort over to the right side. Whichever seated position you're taking, assume that position. And then we're going to bring the arms up, inhale, exhale, twist to the right. And you can take hold of the chair 
and then rest down onto it. Now I'm finding that in order to really be comfortable, I need more height. So the idea here is don't be um, hesitant about how much height you use. Use whatever it takes to find yourself in a uh, supported position. And then ease the way up. Be neutral, take a few breaths. And then you'll take your crop over to the other side. Unless you have a second set. And again, take the same seated posture, but if you're using a cross legged posture, then you want to switch your leg position. And then we bring the arms up, inhale, exhale, twist to the left, and fold down into the forward bend to the side. Not really a forward bend, it's just a supporting twist. And we the ease off from there, back to neutral, a couple breaths. And now, if you have a wall space available, we'll do a legs up the wall pose, be Parita Cardi. If you don't have a wall and you do have a chair like this, then your alternative can be to simply use the chair apparatus for your be Parita Cardi. So you can be something like this. You don't have to have this much height. This kind of is nice. It kind of gets a little bit of a lift, but you want to keep your, your low back on the floor. So this is a very nice, uh, very comfortable position to do uh, the pose. But if you have a wall, then you can do your uh, legs up the wall pose, which is how I'm going to set up. So go ahead and set up as you can, as you wish. And for those who are viewing this on tape later, 
the basic structure of the legs of the wall post is if you have a height like a bolster, you put it a few inches away from the wall. You can put a block there to measure that off if you wish. You take a folded blanket if you have and put it under the leading edge of the blanket. And then you can have another blanket stretched out on top of it, especially if you have a block here. The way the block looks is this. Uh, I'm not going to use it because I find it actually gets in my way. Uh, but the idea is that when you level down, this helps you guide your sacrum into a nice flat uh, space parallel to the floor. If you do have a block like that, you for sure want to have a blanket like this, just for the comfort of not being on a hard block. <laughs> and then something for under your head. So this is the basic structure. If you don't have a wall, you use the same structure, only using a chair. So if you're going into, for those who aren't familiar with it, if you sit with your, here, uh, say my left hip against the wall, then I can swing my feet up. And the idea here is to have your butt right against the wall. And you may need to uh, fuss with it a little bit to kind of, you know, out of your way to get your butt as close to the wall as you can. And then you let go. Your hands can be off to the sides, hands on the floor, palms up, or you can bring your hands to your torso, palms down. And now you just let gravity take over, bringing your sit bones down and allowing your sacrum to move into a place that's basically uh, close to parallel to the floor. And then just let the breath quiet. And while we're here, I'll talk us through a little Ujjayi Pranayama. But just as I said at the beginning with the uh, Nadi Chodhana Pranayama, uh, go at your own pace if, if you wish. You don't have to follow my cues in terms of the timing. Uh, I, I know it's everybody's different. So if we have five people doing this, we're going to have five different timings. So if you have to conform yourself to mine, that can be a problem. If you're brand new to this, you may want to use my cues because it at least gives some sense of uh, proper timing. But for people who have experience with it, you can ignore my timing and do your own. In any case, just take a few more breaths in and out the nostrils. And as we do it, I'm gonna give the cues for the holding of the breath, but for people who aren't familiar with that, you can ignore the holds and just go through the regular breath without holds. Same thing with the bandhas. I'm going to give the cues for the bandhas, but if you don't know them, just ignore those cues. All right, take an inhale through both nostrils. A full inhale, expanding the chest. Lifting and opening the chest, the rib cage. And then a full and complete exhale. And we'll begin with an inhale again. Lift and open the chest, expanding the rib cage. The completion of the inhale, hold the breath and engage Mula Bandha. Engage the central perineal tendon, a little uh, engagement in the perineal. Keep that move the bond of that engagement as you exhale. Hold, and now add Udiyana Bandha, where we draw the navel back toward the spine. Release those bandhas and inhale. Hold, engage Mula Bandha. Keep Mula Bandha as you exhale. Hold. 
hold ad udiyana banya, find the navel for the spine. Release the binders, inhale. Hold, engage in the binder. Keep more binder as you exhale. Hold, and udiyana. Release the bind and inhale and continue on your own at your own pace. And then after your next hold, after exhale, you can return to normal breathing. So you can feel free to just continue with your party on if you wish as well. But I'm going to guide us into Shavasana at this point. Now, if you're in the Breathe Party and you like this legs up the wall pose or the legs on the chair as you are, stay there for your Shavasana. It's a perfectly good place to be for Shavasana. If you want to stretch out in your regular Shavasana, you can feel free to do that. And so I'm going to talk through coming out of deep breath of Karani. So we have cross our legs, keeping the feet on the wall, bringing the legs down into a version of cross, the simple cross legged pose. And then change the leg positions, the opposite leg. And then feet on the wall, push yourself off until your sacrum is on the floor. And then you can cross your legs on top of your bolster. Cross your legs the other way. And now we'll go right into Shavasana. So you can change your position and find uh, a spot that's more comfortable on the floor for you if you wish, or you may be able to do as I'm going to and just stay in this basic structure, leaving the bolster under my knees and releasing into my Shavasana right here where I am. And you can get up and move around if you may wish. But the idea is to 
do as little disturbance as necessary. And then just let go into your Shavasana. Let the breath quiet. Just completely relax and release under the floor. And so now feel free to stay in your Shavasana if you wish. And I'm going to talk the way out. So bring awareness back into you from your control of the breath. And back to a more normal condition. Let your eyes gently open. Bring your hands to your abdomen or torso if they're not already there. Bend your knees and put your feet on the floor, or as in my case, on the bolster. And then gently roll over onto your side. Perfectly right side. Stay here for a few breaths. When you come up, keep your neck soft and bring the flat of your head up flat. So use your arm strength and gently push to a seating posture. All right, thank you all for coming. Namaste. Namaste. And good night. Good night. Take care, everybody. Good night, thanks.